Hey, small business owners and entrepreneurs. Simply put, leverage is the ability to create something more, something that's more valuable than the sum of its parts. For a manufacturing product, this might be pretty straightforward. In service-based businesses, we're often trading our time for money. Today, we're gonna to talk about specific ways that you can better leverage product and service-based businesses. We'll bring more to customers and more to the bottom line. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. I'm Stephen Krause and I provide small business consulting services and help owners like you create practical, actionable, sustainable solutions so that you can create an impact. All right, so uh, I've done a few changes and I wanna, uh, to the format of the show. And the first thing is um, that I wanna make sure that right from the start, you understand what's in it for you. I respect the time of small business owners. I know how busy you are. So I want you to be able to understand that we're gonna get in and we're gonna talk about something that matters to you. So today we're gonna talk about leverage and not in uh, a bad way. I think leverage often gets used as, an ex as, a, as a word um, that comes across uh, with negative connotations. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using positive attributes of your business to create value for your customers. And so that's the core that we're going to get, get to today. And not just understanding the concept is one thing, but how can we actually take that information and use it in a business right now? So we're going to do that. Um, and, and we're going to keep this kind of stuff, as I've said before, practical, actionable, and sustainable. What are we going to do that's actually going to make a business difference for you? So that's the first thing. Um, uh, I've like I said, I've changed the format a little bit uh, in terms of keeping it. I really want to keep it short and I, I want you to understand straight out what's coming for you. But um, and then there are a few other things that uh, we'll talk about as we go through it. Um, I'd love to hear in the, in the notes, below, in the, uh, comments below, if you like the new format or if, uh, maybe you like the older format better, uh, but we'll, we'll definitely talk about, uh, tech, talk about that. And I'd love, I'd love your feedback. Um, thank you so much for watching and spending time with me today. I do know that you're busy. So, uh, I want to make this worth your while for live viewers, please feel free to, uh, uh, put a comment in the, in the chat. And if you have a question, uh, I'll be happy to look at those as long as I have it up. Yes. And I do have a couple of links I want to share today. So we're going to, uh, do that real quick. One is that after the show, I will be on Twitch two times today as kind of as a test to see what, uh, what we're going to try and do here. Um, so the first link that you're going to see in the chat is the Twitch link for uh, the Beyond 50% Twitch channel. And I would love to uh, have you there. Uh, I did a pre-show Instagram live uh, session. And what I'm trying to do is give people the opportunity to um, interact with me uh, before and after the show. Um, and it, it in a more... Uh, uh, well, in a less structured kind of environment, but also in a way where I can uh, share with you how the show is produced, um, what's going through my mind as I'm getting ready for the show, and uh, you know, and then afterward, how do I get from a finished show to, uh, or how do I get from a from a, pro a produced show to a completely finished content creation process, which is. Now we're talking about blog posts and articles and stuff like that. So those are a, a few things um, that all, and all of these links will also be in the show notes after I get those done this afternoon. Um, but those are things I thought might be interesting to people. The second link I put up there is a link to a survey that I started on MailChimp for a course that I'm producing on cash for small business. And I'm expecting this to be a three-part course or a three course series. And I would really love to hear what you as small business owners have to say about the um, impact of small of cash in your small business, but also what would be valuable to you in a course like that. 
Um, the first course is pretty much done, um, but we are still in the process of finalizing it. So if there's anything that comes up and we can always, of course, update them as time goes forward. But that link is also in the uh, chat for the show. And I would love to hear any feedback anybody has. So um, that's, that's that. For the show notes themselves, they will be at uh, this should be the episode URL should be right there. And it's b50p.info forward slash UATTR055. That's where you're going to find for podcast listeners who are not watching the show live. That's where you're going to find the information that I talk about uh, in, in terms of the show notes for later. All right. So uh, we'll pull that. No. Oh. See, this is. Let's get rid of that. Now we're okay. All right. So let's get into this to whole topic of leverage and what does it mean? So when you have a lever, um, you have two basic, you have a, a, a the, the lever itself, you have the fulcrum and you have the force applied. Um, and I want to stay very, very focused today on the fulcrum because that's where we can shift the impact of our business. Um, you know, and it might be tempting to say, well, but Steve, why aren't we talking about force? Well, the the problem with talking about force is that force doesn't change the amount of leverage you have or the, the overall impact of what you're doing. All it does is mean you're doing more work to create the same amount of value on the customer side. And so, yes, in, in and early on, you may have to do a lot of force to get that needle to move on the other side, to get the other end of the lever to move. Um, but as an ongoing enterprise, we don't, that's not how we want to operate. So we, we, we don't want to talk about force as an ongoing business. We want to talk about being able to adjust and optimize the fulcrum of the, the, the lever system that we're talking about. And the reason I like these physical uh, examples, these physical models that we use um, for business. And I've done a series on Newton's laws. This is the last series, the last in that series, uh, of physics for business. Um, but I, I think it provides us a, a commonly understood framework that allows us to apply business principles to something that we already understand. And, uh, uh, if you're in the memory space, you've probably heard that if you can associate a concept with a concept you already understand or know, um, it's easier to remember. And so I think it provides us that structure and framework. So force versus fulcrum, we're not going to talk about force because force is just that brute force that we're trying to go through. And that's not where I want you to spend your attention. Um, you may have to early on, but we really want to get to the point where we're adjusting and optimizing the fulcrum of our business. So um, think about the fulcrum as, as kind of your core competency, if you will. What do you really do that is unique and different and adds value for your customers. Um, so we, we kind of understand the, the concept. In fact, I've got a, a, an example here. I'm going to go grab a prop. I haven't done a prop. I haven't done a prop in a while, maybe ever really. Um, so, and there may be a reason for that. We're going to find out right now. So this is we're just going to make this our little lever. I wanted to. There we go. Um, there we go. Hopefully you can see that in the shot. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so I'm probably a little out of focus because I manually focus things, uh, and we'll talk about that another time. But as you can see here, it, imagine this is our lever. The tripod stand is the fulcrum. And uh, when the fulcrum's in the middle, if you apply pressure on one side and you don't have it locked, the other side will go up or the other side will shift by an equal amount. And you might think that's stable, but for businesses, a, a, a stable business is actually kind of a misnomer, in my opinion. 
a stable business is basically one where you're in decline and just don't know it yet. Okay. So we don't want a stable business. We want a business where we are always adding more value through our core competency than the resources that are required to create that value. And so when you shift it, so if we shift it this way, for a, a small amount of deflection on this side, yep, we get a much more significant deflection on the far side. And that's the leverage that we're talking about that we need uh, in business. And so if I do, you know, if I, let's see, it has a level, but, you know, if I go down maybe an inch, you can see that the far end went uh, far more than an inch from its original position. And the, the, the converse of that is also true. You can get yourself in a position where you have to put a lot of effort on, on your side to get a tiny amount of work done on the other side. And that's a declining business. That's where we're putting in more resources than we're going to get out in terms of revenue and value to the customer. And we don't want to do that. So uh, we always want our, um, we always want our value or our fulcrum to be in a position where it's creating more value for the customer than the amount of resources we're putting in. All right, so that's that's the the basics. Um, I'm not going to keep this on here because uh, quite frankly, it just takes up too much of the shot. But I think you, I, th I think it's pretty clear. Um, what we want to do is make sure that for a growing business, we have a lot more mechanical advantage. And if our business is in a growth state or in a, in an early stage, we might be putting a lot of work in to make that, that movement happen, but we've got to have a plan and got to have a, a way of getting, uh, from, um, from that position to where that fulcrum is shifted more our direction so that we can shift the value for the customer, because ultimately that's what matters. We have to be able to create uh, something valuable enough to the customer to pay for our business, to pay for what we do. So that's where we want to head. And, um, and I don't want you to get caught in the trap of thinking that your time is already paid for. So it doesn't matter if you have to do a lot more work. Um, yes, as business owners, a lot of times we do have, our time is paid for, but it's also the only thing we can't ever get back. And it's, you can only leverage your time one time if you're spending it on a single sale or something like that. So it's really important to focus on how can we create value that is more, that is magnified by the leverage of our business. How can we move that fulcrum? So let's talk a little bit about product-based businesses. Uh, it's kind of, it, this one's easier because we can think of, we want to make a whole that is worth more than the sum of the parts. So what do we use to do that? Well, obviously we use raw materials, uh, process knowledge, skills, uh, design, and we mix those things together and we create value. We combine those things. Um, if you combine the process, whole wheat, sea salt, and canola oil, you get a Triscuit. And so there's not a whole lot of margin in whole wheat or sea salt or canola oil by themselves. But if you add the process that makes a Triscuit, then there is more value. And at least for those of us who love Triscuits, but you get the idea. And so what is the fulcrum in that process? It is in fact, 
the process of combining those ingredients and the, the process of making the, the, you know, maybe the proportions and the, the process of baking and making the, I don't know how Triscuits are made. I just want to eat them. So, but the, the idea is the process that's used to make them is what makes them uh, what they are. That's what makes the sum of those raw materials worth more as a whole. And so uh, that's kind of the concept is, and, and, and understanding that, how do you look at your own product-based business and say, okay, anybody can do whole wheat, anybody can get canola oil, and anybody can uh, get sea salt. So it is, in fact, the process that makes that particular product unique. Now, it may be that there's, uh, there may be raw materials that you have that no one else does. Uh, maybe you're doing reclaimed wood, and the wood that you're reclaiming is old barn wood in northern Colorado, and very few people have access to it, and you make really cool furniture out of it, and part of the value to the people who are buying your products is the fact that the wood you're using is reclaimed from this area, or something like that. So it may be that you have raw materials that are unique. Um, the, it, it, and, and so you need to look at the aspects of your own business and your own process and say, okay, what is unique about this? Identify that and then figure out how can you make that more valuable in your business. Now, maybe that means you take the same, uh, the same unique feature and use it to create a new product. Or maybe that feature is something that you can expand on within your given product. Or maybe you can build on it using something else that you do to make it more valuable. Those are things you're going to have to look at in your own business to determine how you can best optimize it and move that fulcrum to help you get more leverage in your business. Let's talk briefly about service-based businesses. And I think this is one where people, there's a risk that we're not going to think about leverage or that we think if we leverage our business too much, we're greedy because I mean, it's just me working. So I'm too greedy if I ask for, for more, more money. Well, it, I honestly, the market's going to tell you whether or not what you're doing is worth what, what you're asking. Um, so in many ways, it doesn't come down to greed. It comes down to market viability. Um, but putting that topic aside for, for a while, what goes into a service-based product? It isn't just your time. We think of it as our time, but it's our knowledge of how to perform whatever activity that we're selling, whatever we're doing. It's the skills that we use. So some, some may be just theoretical knowledge. Some may be actual skills, whether it's um, a, a skill with a specific tool or, or a, um, skill, a communication skill or something else. Um, experience. So you may have experience that you are able to um, look at a specific situation where your product or, or where your service is going to be applicable and you're going to be able to put the pieces together in a way that's better than someone who doesn't have that experience. So that's valuable. What about time? There's two aspects to time, how fast you can do it. Maybe with your knowledge, skills, and experience, you can do this whole thing faster than somebody who doesn't have those things. Or there's schedule. So right now in my house, I have a ring doorbell that I need to, to install or actually fix. And, um, you know, I will get to it, but is the schedule going to be acceptable to my family? And so, uh, but there could be somebody that could install it and their schedule might have an advantage over my schedule. They might not do, they might not do it faster. They might not do it better, although they could, 
but they might be able to do it in the time that is appropriate. And so that's another piece. So there's two pieces of time. There's the speed to get it done, but there's also the timing by the, the scheduling of the product or the service. What about convenience? Quality. You know, we go back to, can someone do that better than the person who's hiring you to do it? And, and we would maybe, or maybe not, maybe it doesn't matter if they can do it better, if the timing is, is appropriate, but quality can be part of it. You know, how well, how well that product is, or that service is, is concluded. Um, then you have things like insurance and guarantees. Um, again, we go back to process. You may have a process for your service that increases the value of the outcome in some way. Um, you may have unique service combinations that allow you to create a unique product or a, a unique service. And uh, you may have other features which you can, you can uh, use to uh, enhance the position of the fulcrum in your business. So, you know, one, another great example of this is, is uh, I don't change the oil in my car. I know how to, I can do it, I can do a good job, but I can't dispose of the oil without, I mean, I can, but it takes more time. And, um, the, the shops can do it much faster because they can put the car on a lift really quick. And, um, if you've ever changed your own oil, just even using an oil filter wrench is worth having someone else do it that knows how to do it well. Um, so there's reasons that we don't, that, that we hire professionals and it may be in this case, you know, that speed and disposal, disposal of, of, uh, you know, the oil or whatever is the driving factors, but there may be other, you know, for your business, there could be plenty of other driving factors. And what's important is that, um, we look at how do we combine those things to create more value, which moves the fulcrum and allows us to leverage our business more effectively. Um, it, I think sometimes people think that it's harder to leverage a service-based business, but I believe, and I think if you look at the, um, the number of things that go into a business in general, oftentimes it is the service aspects that are differentiating that change that, that change how people perceive your business versus somebody else versus another business. So I, I would encourage you if you're, you know, if you're a service-based business, you have a lot more, um, you have a lot more tools than you might believe. And if you're a product-based business, the service component of your business, if there is one, may be something that you can use to actually shift the fulcrum without changing the cost of materials or something like that, which can be expensive. And I understand that. So let's talk about how do we get this to practical action? Take a minute to write down what you convert into a product. If you're a product-based business, what are the raw materials that go in? And what is, but then go past that raw material piece. It's almost never going to be the material that changes your business because materials are commodities. Almost always there's, there are, there are times when that's not the case, but largely for most small business owners, the materials we use are commodity products. So they're not special. So what makes our business special is you. It's what do you know? It's the process that you use. It's the knowledge that you have. Those are the things that are going to differentiate your product from your customer, from your uh, competitor's product. So for your business, write down what you use. We need to know what raw materials there are, but then write down how you go about converting them to the product that you sell your customer to the thing that people are paying you for. Um, then take a minute to, uh, look at 
what do your customers pay you for? Why do they buy from you versus somebody else? And you might have to ask them. So this may not take 30 minutes. I think, I think you can probably do the first part in a, a fairly short amount of time. Uh, you know, what goes into my product and, and then what do I use to convert those, those elements into a finished good? Um, but understanding why people buy from you may be a little trickier. They may just like you. And so how do you integrate, how do you, how do you leverage likability? Well, a lot of people do it. Okay. So, um, influencers on social media are, are always leveraging their likability, right? So it's, it's possible. And so I think that's important to remember the, for service-based businesses do the same thing. Um, what, what is it that goes into the product or service that you're offering? And, you know, like I said, there's a whole list of things I talked about earlier that go into surface-based businesses and services for product-based businesses. Um, uh, and I will, I'll have those in the show notes. I keep hitting that wrong button. I'm going to have to change that button. Show notes link, uh, for those of you listening on the podcast, it's b50p.info forward slash UATTR055. Um, maybe I just need better training, but I may have to move that button. So we've identified what we use to create our product or service. That's a very uh, practical thing that you can do. All right. And now how can you use that to create more value without using more resources. That's what moves the fulcrum. If when you look at creating value, you look at changing the resources you're using, the force you're applying to the lever, then you stopped moving the fulcrum and started using more force. And we want to avoid that. So how can you create more value without changing the amount of resources. And that's what you can look at to change the location of the fulcrum on your lever and leverage the value of your product and, and service more for your customer. And again, we go back to, this is not an evil doer thing. This is, this is how do you use all of the things that you know that you're, you have access to, to provide more value for your customers. So it is about winning on both sides. It isn't about taking advantage of somebody. It isn't about um, strong arming, you know, we leverage. I have leverage over that guy. Well, that's not what this is about. This is about leveraging your resources to create even more value for the people who serve or for that you serve with your business. Okay. So I am committed to keeping these things brief. We are almost at 30 minutes, which means I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, the show notes, once again, I'm going to hit the right button this time. B50P.info forward slash UATTR055 for um, uh, all the show notes, you know, kind of the summary of what I talked about. The live stream video or the recording of the live stream video will be there. The uh, downloadable version of the audio podcast will be there podcast will be on iTunes later tonight, um, for podcast listeners. And, um, so you can contact me at some of the more traditional methods like go.beyond at b50p.com. Uh, you can visit the website at beyond50percent.com or call the number on the screen. Um, for uh, social media, mostly active on here on YouTube and potentially Instagram. Um, like I said, I did an Instagram live this morning. We'll see how that works out for, for me. Um, that was my first Instagram live. Um, and uh, there's also for people who use Twitter and stuff like that, that's also available. Um, the, uh, let's see, for... Um, oh, if this video was helpful to you, even though I stammered at the end, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. 
uh, for podcast listeners, um, consider leaving a, a review on iTunes or whatever podcatcher you are used to using. In the far right, no, far, I knew this was going to happen because this is backwards for me. So on the right side of the screen for you, you're right. There should be a playlist for all the live episodes or the recordings for Beyond 50% for up and to the right. And in the center of the screen, there should be a logo once I've done the post-processing where you can go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the bills, the bill, click the bell so that you're always informed of new content when it comes out or when we scheduled a new live stream episode. With that, it's time for me to get back to work.